Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Breaking news. Simon Phillips is the one that break, um, broke this particular news. Can confirm Conor Gallagher has been called up to the England senior squad. Will be announced on Sunday. This is massive, massive news uh, from a Chelsea perspective and for Conor Gallagher as well. I mean, incredible, this growth. So um, stay tuned. Let's talk a little bit more about this. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, we are back again on the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, what an incredible news this early in the morning at 8.20 a.m. Uh, Sydney time. Um, of course, in UK, it's 9.20 p.m. Um, and obviously, wherever else you guys are, hope you guys are enjoying the weekend. But what an incredible news. As I said, Conor Gallagher has made it uh, to the England national team. The announcement will be made uh, sometime tomorrow. Seems like Mason Mount is out. That's what the comments are happening over here. Does that mean no Mason Mount? And Simon Phillips has said, yes, he's out. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, this is... A massive, massive news. This is what I tweeted out just a moment ago. Conor Gallagher can no longer be disregarded for Chelsea next season. Man has cracked it into the national team. Now we're playing for Crystal Palace. We need to understand how incredible this achievement is. I mean, we've probably started this season thinking, yeah, Conor Gallagher is a very special player, but yeah, let him go on alone. Let's see what happens. Most likely we're going to sell him and we're going to make some money out of it. But here's absolutely gone out and balled out for Patrick Vieira. It's not even funny. Patrick Vieira, on a regular basis, praises about Conor Gallagher. Wilfred Zaha praised about Conor Gallagher. I mean, this is now to a point where we as Chelsea fans, and I think even Thomas Tuchel, we cannot disregard this player anymore. This player has to be in the mix next season, in the preseason. Hopefully, he'll have a very strong preseason. I've got no doubt he will. He's got that determination. He did fairly well when he played the play, uh, preseason with us this season, to be honest. Um, except for that one match, I think it was Bournemouth, where he started off as a as an attacking midfielder, you know, one of the attacking eights. But then he was dropped into the uh, lone DM position as a register sort of uh, position um, in the second half, where he looked a bit out of sorts. And that's not really his game, to be honest. So I can't blame him for not being able to do that role as a lone DM, which is fine. At the end of the day, he's a classic box-to-box. -box. He can, you know, he's got the work rate to defend back. You know, he'll come back, make the interceptions, break up the play, whatever needs to happen. And then he'll attack forward, key passes, goals, assists. I mean, it's incredible. Let's have a look at his stats so far this season. Um, and once again, it just, it, we, we cannot disregard this any longer. 10 Premier League matches, four goals, two assists, um, 877 minutes played in the Premier League. I mean, he is an important player for Crystal Palace. And one of the reasons why Crystal Palace is, you know, doing well, let's have a quick look at Crystal Palace, where they are in the, in the, um, in the table, because it's quite incredible to see what's going on here. Crystal Palace are 10th. It, it's, it's, 11 matches. So let me just increase that a little bit. Come on. Oh, sorry. There we go. That's more like it. Crystal Palace, 11 games played, three wins. They haven't got enough wins, of course, because they keep, keep on getting, you know, draws. And two losses. It, it's just... Only two losses. Man City had two losses. West Ham have had two losses. Um, Man United have had more losses than them. So Crystal Palace, only two losses. Some of these draws, they could have converted to a win, and, and some of them actually where they came back from behind. So it's uh, pretty impressive from them. But three matches, six draws, two losses, 15 points. And 10th position for someone like Patrick Vieira is, is, is doing a bit of a job over there, to be honest. And you know, Conor Gallagher is playing a massive part. Going back to Conor Gallagher's, you know, stats at the moment, this is, I'm not surprised one bit that he's been called up for England. In fact, I was surprised that he was initially, he wasn't initially called up, I think. Um, and the fact that now Mason Mount, he's, he's pulled out. And I hope he recovers well quickly because we need Mason um, straight after, uh, after the international break. We've got a lot of games coming up and it seems like Mason... 
I don't know whether he's going to be fit for next weekend's match, but we need him to come back quick. I think it's got something to do with his wisdom tooth. He's done a video recently as well. But let's just look at these numbers from, from uh, Conor Gallagher. 90 minutes against Brentford. Obviously, he couldn't play against Chelsea the first match. 90 minutes with West Ham. 90, 90, 90. 71 minutes against Leicester. He probably started that and then he came, came off. Um, 86 minutes. I mean, Man City one was the highlight so far a goal and an assist and the way he attacked man city the way he pressed the way he counter pressed incredible this is a perfectly suited player for thomas tuchel work rate energy can score goals can assist can defend as well we'll have a look at some of the defensive stats because th this player now honestly Thomas Tuchel, I don't know how he's going to fit him in the midfield, but it's a, it's a great headache to have for him. Um, whether we change the style for for someone like Conor Gallagher, or, you know, just to include another midfielder, I don't know whether we're going to be continuing with you know three at the back, double pivot. Do we go with a three man midfield and maybe just go with the two strikers up front? It could possibly happen. We've seen this year, uh, this particular season, where we've played with Lukaku and Verna and another additional midfielder. So. Things need to, I suppose, happen next season. I mean, look, if it continues being great the way it is, fine. It is what it is. He still needs to be in the mix somehow. He could possibly take Ross Barkley's position, Saul's position. Do you know what I mean? You know, those minutes that Ross Barkley gets and Saul gets could easily be transferable to Conor Gallagher. And Conor Gallagher could be a particular player that just breaks into the Chelsea midfield, you know, with the likes of Kante, him getting injured on a regular basis. I wouldn't be surprised if someone like Conor Gallagher, um, you know, becomes a mainstay. And not to say anything against Kante, he will still be a world-class player and he will still be a major player for us. But the fitness is a bit of an issue. Ruben Loftus-Cheeks rise. It could be a great competition for Ruben. But these numbers, Wolves as well. He scored a goal against Wolves. Let's not forget, 2-0 victory. Wow. Um Backing up the Man City goal and assist, he backed it up with another goal against Wolves. Two goals against West Ham. I believe that was a comeback victory, assist against Spurs. And all of this against Arsenal as well. There's no stats there to show that there's a goal or an assist, but he was incredible in that game. So this, as I keep saying, it cannot be disregarded any longer. We keep shouting about Declan Rice. We keep shouting about XYZ Shermany. I think we need to be serious about Conor Gallagher, ladies and gentlemen. Honestly, we need to be serious. And Declan Rice, yes, he can play as a lone DM, but he's been playing as a as, as an eight for West Ham in recent times. So it needs to be understood what is the position that we're going to play Declan Rice in. I mean, if it's as a lone DM, fine. You know, someone, someone who's going to be anchoring the uh, midfield, and then you've got the eights. You can have Conor Gallagher, you can have Mount, you can have Kante, you can have Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Well, then, then, okay, fine. But that's not what Declan Rice is doing at the moment. Declan Rice is playing with Suchek in the double pivot where Suchek is the holder. Um, but these are some of the stats um, for Conor Gallagher. Let's have a look at his defensive style, which is going to be quite interesting. Overall rating 7.5 uh, for Conor Gallagher, which is quite strong uh, for playing for a team like Crystal Palace, who's 10th and then doing so well. 2.6 tackles per match, uh, 0.1 interception per match, 2.3 uh, fouls, 0 0.9 clearance, um, 0 0.3. I mean, the biggest one is 2.6 tackles, nearly three tackles a game. So quite impressive defensively as well. You know, he knows exactly what needs to be done. Offensively, we've already shown you guys four goals, two assists, 2.3. Um, is that SP goal? What does that stand for? Shots per game, shots per game. Wow, you know, he's not shy in taking shots. Key passes is very important. One point, nearly two key passes a game, which is very good. 1.2 dribbles, so he's not shy to, you know, dribble away. Let's have a look at his passing ranges. Uh, we've already seen 1.7 uh, pa key passes, 32.1 average uh, pass per game, pass per game. So, look, that's probably something that will increase if you're in Chelsea because you're going to see a lot more of the ball. But I've got no doubt he's capable of doing that. Um, passing percentage, uh, 79.98, uh, nearly 80%, which is quite okay. Probably would want to increase that. But once again, he plays for a team like Crystal Palace, which you know can get a bit difficult at times. Um, 
but for Chelsea, I'm pretty sure that passing percentage will increase. Crosses, 1.5 crosses per game. Long uh, long balls, 1.4. Overall, as I said, 7.5 is the rating, which is very, very strong. So overall, ladies and gentlemen, this is an incredible news. Let me know what your thoughts are. I mean, is he now genuinely part of the Chelsea setup for next season? It has to be, you know, in the, in the thought process. I believe so, um, to be honest. But if you've enjoyed this video, smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. A couple of recent streams that we've done, do, do, do go and check them out. They've been, um, you know, quite, quite, um, you know, loved at the moment um, by, by the subscribers. Uh, there was one about Hakim Ziyech and Atiyah uh, Zalai. And obviously yesterday we did the one on Chelsea assessment. So check that out. Until next time, everyone. See ya.